Let's look into Saudi Arabia, a prospering land despite being almost fully covered by the Arabian desert. Apparently, whole 12% of its agricultural output is made up of dates, which would be comparable to the importance of beef farming in the US. That is, if I'm comparing the right numbers. Anyway, date farming and date consumption have a large heritage in Arabian countries, so let's now look at how they farm them, and then I'll reveal a recent innovation in date farming from Saudi Arabia. Now, let's do a quiz. How many date palms does Saudi Arabia have? A. Two of them, but they are really big. B. Date palms as far as the eye can see. C. 40 million. And D. 36 million. Alien. D is correct. According to official sources, there is some 36 million date palms in the kingdom, and 27 million of them should be bearing fruit. What's interesting is that if you live anywhere south of Kansas, you could probably grow date palms in your own backyard too. The main prerequisite is that the soil doesn't freeze up in the winter. That would be a deal breaker. Otherwise, the trees are pretty hardy. And they must be, since they are growing in a literal desert with no umbrella or sunscreen, just water. When I was doing my research, all of the videos were saying that the optimal spacing for your plantation would be one and a half meters, which is about this fuck much <laughs> but when you look at the footage with your critical thinking turned on you realize that although i am fairly tall i wouldn't be able to embrace a car like this so i would say at least five meters is required between the trees but as with most fruit trees you can just plug it into the ground and expect it to be heavy with dates the next morning it can apparently take some four to eight years until the first harvest and some seven to ten until the first commercially meaningful one, which would be comparable to olive trees that also take an eternity. I believe that the date farming industry hosts one of the largest discrepancies in terms of technology use in the production cycle. Because on one hand, I've seen large plantations where the dates were manually harvested one by one, and on the other, I've seen a state-of-the-art sorting machine that goes through one kilo of dates per second, rotate each one of them 360 degrees and takes multiple photos in two spectrums of every single piece that goes through to accurately source them. Although I've also seen reasonable progress being made on the plantation, such as precision irrigation and automatization of some of the day-to-day -day processes. Also, there are about 400 date palm species in Saudi Arabia, but only 40 of them are economically valuable, with medjool dates being the most commonly grown. And dates have a fairly large harvesting window too, from June to November, which is also caused by the fact that not all of them are harvested ripe. Some of them leave the canopy while still ripening, but how I get it, the market for them isn't as big as for the ones that we are used to. Now, what's the big innovation that I was on about in the beginning of the video? You might have heard that composting palm trees or palm fronds is nearly impossible. But that's a myth, and the Saudis are taking the use of palm waste to a whole next level with a novelty called biochar. So the National Center for Palms and Dates and the Ministry of Environment, Water and Agriculture have launched what is reportedly the region's first biochar initiative. And what they are expecting is a 30% reduction in water consumption, faster plant growth and higher yields for whomever puts it on their soil. Now, I think it's a brilliant idea since when you prune 36 million trees, you are bound to to have some waste from them. And if they'll now process it into biochar and put it back into use, I view it as a very responsible way to use one's resources. And what's your view on this announcement? Let me know if you have some first-hand experience with biochar and thanks for watching.